Welcome back to my video series about Valiant Hearts, The Great War. So we talked about a lot of different things so far in this series, but what we haven't talked about is probably the most important part of this. The fact that it takes place during the Great War. This is the setting, this is the situation these characters are in. So let's talk about how it uses that setting to make this argument we've been talking about, that the war itself is the enemy and that loss and horrors around them is what the uniting factor is for these characters. So we follow these four characters throughout major events of the war, including the Second Battle of Ypres, the Battle of the Somme, the Second Battle of the Alliance. But these are all major moments. How does it use them to say something about the war? Well, there's a few different things to bring up, and I'll address a little bit more in the conclusion, but much like the setting and story videos, there's a little bit too much here to break down in just a few short videos. If I had more time, I'd dive into all of this. But that aside, let's try to examine at least a couple of moments. So, first off, the game begins with a brief little cutscene about the outbreak of the war. And honestly, it it's a quick overview, to say the least. I mean, literally, just watch it. I'll play it front to back. It's only about 30 seconds. August 1st, 1914. After the assassination of Prince Franz Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire declares war on Russia. Because of established alliances, France is preparing for conflict. A few hours after the announcement of the general mobilization, German civilians living in France are asked to leave the country. This was the outbreak of a massive conflict, and the game spends almost no time explaining it. Why such quick explanation? I mean, first of all, maybe the best thing to say is, in the grand scheme of things, what else is there to say? As a historian, I'm not discounting that further explanations provide amazing historical insight. But this game is about stories of individuals and their experiences with the war. So the fact that it glosses over all the different reasons for the beginning of the war itself actually fits what the rest of the game argues. That to these individuals, the why of the war is actually irrelevant. The fact that they're in it, this is what they have to survive. The nationalism or whatever causes you want to say were the lead up to the Great War is unimportant in their lives. So then now let's talk about some of the individual conflicts that affect our heroes and what it tries to say about them and use that to say about the overarching war. So, you know, let's dive into Verdun. Verdun was a brutal conflict and long conflict. And so it is of no shock that it plays a prevalent part in this game. Emil and Freddy both play roles in the conflict and experience firsthand the battle. For the two soldiers, they win their part of the battle with commendations. But the game goes out of its way to acknowledge the toll of the battle at the end. This is a major point that the game goes out of its way to highlight. In this moment, all our heroes have experienced a big win, yet despite that, the game in full control of these moments makes sure to highlight that not only was the war not over, but even the battle wasn't over, and that it came at a massive human cost. All right, now let's jump ahead a little bit more into the story. Let's dive to closer to the end of the game. We arrive at Emil, who has seen much more bloodshed and horrors in his time on the front. Frankly, he's beaten down and he's done with this war. This is what the context is in the lead up to the second battle of the Ains. For those of you with deep scholarly knowledge of the Great War, you know what this battle is famous for, but I'll leave that as a bit of a reveal in a second. This mission is the epitome of a low point as the player. This mission is pitch black, bombs are falling everywhere, and traversing this battlefield at the orders of your commander can feel literally impossible. Emil is watching his friends and fellow soldiers die all around him. And even in moments where he's able to save a soldier trapped underneath a pile of bodies, half a dozen around him fall as machine gun fire lights up the night. This battle feels overwhelming and fruitless, honestly. So, 
near the end of the mission as you watch your commanding officer scream at your fellow soldiers to march forward into seemingly certain death, the gameplay decision to strike your commander feels natural. So let's just back up. Again, this is a game where Emile, the French soldier, hasn't fired a single shot, has been involved with some casualties on the other side and on his side, but isn't a um, killer. And of all the battles and all the aspects to pinpoint from the Great War, Valiant Hearts takes the time to not only highlight but make our character part of the French military mutinies of 1917. So here we have a game that examined an immense military conflict. And one of the things it chooses to do is to explore a mass mutiny and breakdown of command in the French military. Not only that, but it does it in a way that gives great empathy to a male who takes part in it. In this singular moment, I think we see very clearly how this game wants to see the war. Not as a struggle between nation states or a fight between competing ideologies, but a war fought by soldiers, so many of which were scared and tired and just wanted to go home. So, not to continue to use Call of Duty franchise as a dunkable comparison, but, well, screw it. If you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. So, in the Call of Duty games, your actions as a soldier are unquestionably good or for the betterment of others, and the fact that you kill hundreds or thousands of unnamed enemy soldiers is actually fine. Yet in this game, it takes these historical battles, and what it really just tries to do is put you in the perspective of that soldier and give that fear and anxiety and concern that comes along with it. You're not meant to win the battle or win the war. Just survive it. All you can do is hope to quell what the war is doing. And the war is the enemy here. I talked about this a little bit in the art direction, but even in this moment, what you're fighting against is not clear enemies, it's silhouetted figures that could very well be anybody. And it's not important the fact that it's Germans or Austro-Hungarians or whoever on the opposite side. It's just that the war itself is taking a toll and it's taking a toll on you and it is the enemy so again this setting of the war is important and it uses these battles not to show moments of heroism or moments where you overcome an unnamed evil enemy but rather moments of survival and loss and this war that you're up against is the enemy not the soldier you fight against, not even the soldiers you fight with, but the war itself. 